Thank you. Oh, thank you. Boy, you're kissing. Yeah, we're gonna trim that paw hair up today. Baby, don't you understand that we only get one life? I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. Hello, guys. What it up, what up? It has been an eventful week here. Um, it's been an eventful six months. Yeah. It's <laughs> like we got married and then life said, I'm going to throw everything at you at once to make sure that you can do this. We're quite tired and I'm going to go into like what happened with Nitro and everything, but we don't necessarily want to leave him alone. He needs to be monitored. He just had major surgery. So for the sake of us being exhausted, wanting to watch over him, we're gonna go ahead and do the Q&A now. I was planning on doing it a little bit later on in the month, but we need a break. So we're gonna go ahead and do the Q&A now. I asked you guys on multiple platforms what your questions were, and then I collected all of them. We chose 20 of them, and we're gonna do like 20 questions in 20 minutes. So I'm not gonna sit here and talk your ear off for an entire hour. We're just gonna get in and get out, right? Also, so. side note, Nitro laid down here before we sat down, yeah. so we're not like just rude taking up his bed and everything. He chose to lay on just the edge of it, I think and then we sat down. I think it's taking some weight off of him by having like like his legs kind of propped yeah. up. I think he's just comfortable like that. But first, before we get too far into this, I did want to thank today's sponsor. We are so grateful for our sponsors, especially with everything going on with Nitro. Um, we wouldn't be able to literally survive without them. And so we are very, very, very grateful. We're grateful to you guys for watching and we are just grateful for YouTube and the community as a whole. So before we get too far into it, here's today's sponsor. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor, Aushin. We've been wanting a small work area to be able to leave our saws and other tools set up while we're working and not have to worry about the elements or anything like that. And Aushin was kind enough to send us their new 8x10 utility shed to be able to use for that purpose. They say you need two people to put it together, but it was such a simple process, I was actually able to get the entire thing put together all by myself. And this thing is both big and tall, so there's plenty of room in here for us to be able to work inside. It even comes with vents on both the back and the front walls. and all the doors lock so you can keep anything inside secure. For this size of shed and all of its features, being under $500, you just cannot beat it. And Aushin has tons of other outdoor gear besides just sheds, so make sure you head over to their website and check out all the different things that they have. Like I said, this is kind of just a temporary workspace for us for right now. We don't exactly know where we want it to be at yet because we're not 100% sure on the layout of things. So we'll probably end up putting it on a permanent foundation, but for now it's perfectly fine just sitting on the ground on its own. And we don't have it installed yet, but it even came with like a frame kit for inside of the shed to be able to put plywood down and have a nice floor inside. So once we get it put up on a foundation and get some plywood picked up, we'll be able to put all that inside and have a nice wood floor in there. 
As always, all the information that you need will be linked in the description down below. And thanks again to Ocean for sponsoring today's video. All right, so our first question is from Ronald E. Nix, which also kind of covers what the first thing I wanted to talk about, which is how is the dog? And so he's doing great now, but this week it was very touch and go. We did almost lose him and it was probably the scariest moment of my entire life and I'm sure Cody's life. For sure. Do you want to explain to them? I don't want to just... Yeah, thing. so it was kind of just a freak accident. Um, it was a normal day. Summer fed all the dogs and let them outside. Not even five minutes later after letting them outside, she went to let them back in and noticed that Nitro was just kind of standing there and staring off in the distance. And he was foaming at the mouth a little bit. So she walked up to check on him and noticed his stomach was about three times the size of normal. Yeah. So. Um, it basically like blew up like a balloon. So she called me over. I ran over and touched his stomach and was it's immediately like, we have to go solid. right now. It was now. literally so hard like a rock. It, yeah. like, it was so scary. Yeah. So we were like, oh my God, we have to go right now. I threw him in the car. She got all the other animals ready so we could leave. And we hauled butt to the nearest uh, emergency vet in town. Um, what had happened was his stomach flipped. The vet did say that dogs of this age, it is a little bit more likely for their stomachs to flip. So he didn't eat any faster than he normally does. Yeah, and he we didn't do eat use... anymore. He didn't drink any more than he typically does. It was literally yeah. a normal feeding. And so we kind of considered a freak accident. They got him stabilized at one hospital because he, it was very touch and go. They basically called us into like the emergency room area where they're treating him. And we're like, you know, you need to say your goodbyes. Like we are not gonna be able to save him. By the grace of God, <laughs> they started to pump air out of his stomach and just get him stable so we can get him to a surgical center. So yeah, they used a catheter and pulled as much air out of his stomach as they could and were able to stabilize him. From then we got him in the truck and took him to the next place where he could have surgery because the first place we were at wasn't capable of doing the surgery. The surgeon had basically told us that a three-year-old healthy dog had a 50% chance of surviving the surgery. And, you know, after thinking and discussing it, we- Praying about yeah, it. Yeah, praying about it. We so decided that- we decided we were gonna take the risk. If he was gonna pass away anyway, we, we would at least rather give him the chance to be able to survive it. So they did the surgery and the, the surgeon told us that between driving from the first emergency vet to where they are, his stomach actually unflipped itself. So, so crazy. Um, they said that it's super rare, that really doesn't happen at all but we think the first vet pulling as much air out of his stomach as possible was basically allowed it to free up room in his, in his stomach so it could kind of untwist and fix itself. So they did the surgery anyway because, well one, they didn't know that it wasn't untwisted, but if it happens once, it's likely to happen again. So they went ahead and did the surgery and tacked his actual stomach to his abdomen so it cannot ever happen again. She said he did great and yeah, he made it through. So yeah. it was uh, one of scary the scariest night. things ever. We definitely almost lost him for a second. I was yeah. in the back seat laying, like we have a flat, um, you can lift the seats up in the truck and it's flat back there. And I was laying back there with him and you could like see like him fading away. And it was the scariest moment of my life. I'm so grateful. And we had traffic in our small, tiny little town of nobody. Yeah, we leaving at traffic. like eight o'clock at night, we had traffic. So it On took us like 45 minutes to get to the emergency vet. And that was probably one of the scariest parts is yeah. just uh, hoping we would make it there in time, you know? That's gonna be the longest answer that we have for a question, but obviously yeah, there's just a lot of there's detail a little story to it, yeah. Um, He's doing great, like Cody said, he's on some hardcore drugs, so he is definitely snoozing a lot, and he's doing good. He's yeah, he's doing good. He's still getting up fine. He's mm -hmm. still going up and down the stairs fine and acting like normal. I gave him Walking some around. treats earlier, and he was all excited about it, so... Um, he's yeah, he's doing definitely good. a fighter. He's, he's doing good. He's definitely a fighter. He's a strong dude. So we are very, very, very grateful. And thank you, Jesus, because you granted us a miracle. Yeah. And also, I don't know if we mentioned this, but just kind of something to throw in is the last time we were at his cancer doctor's office, they said that his tumor had looked like oh, yeah. it stabilized. And as long as we can manage his pain and he's not in a bunch of pain, then he should be able to go on with the tumor and it not really affect him yeah. as, as long as it stays 
the size of yeah, it is. the size it is and doesn't continue to grow so. and if in six months you know he's doing really well then we can potentially um, restart radiation and hopefully yeah. and if they can get it to shrink then maybe eventually remove it Paul Winters says uh, my question is this, what are your plans for 2024? What would you like to achieve this year? Also love your channel and hope you feel better soon. Thank you. I'm yeah, definitely feeling better. I um, went to the doctor the other day and they actually told me that I had the flu. So that was nice. And I had an ear infection. So I'm on antibiotics. Everything's good. Um, Cody's definitely feeling better. You were mm -hmm. a little sick. I'm a little congested still. I'm sure yeah. you can probably hear it in my voice, but... And, uh, Thank you for your kindness. So as far as 2024, uh, I mean, nothing's really set in stone yet. We would like to build all of our kitchen cabinets and kind of finish that. Um, we'd like to get started on the shop mm -hmm. and do the foundation for the second shipping container. We got start working on a slab for in between the two. Finish um, the underneath skirting of the house. Um, that's super important to us. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of wood to mill this year mm -hmm. and be able to get that finished. And then... At very least, I'm going to finish the deck this year. Maybe not in the backyard, but across the front of the house and kind of over where the ducks are on the mm -hmm. side of the house. We definitely want to get that part of the deck all finished out so it yeah. doesn't look so incomplete. Uh, Tracy Wild says, Hi, can you tell me where you got your shipping containers? I'm in Missouri as well and need a shipping container. So the company is called USA Containers. I'll but leave their information yeah, right here. Use the, the link that Summer adds in because there's actually two companies mm -hmm. under that name. One is USAContainers.co is the website. And I think the other one is like .com or something. But mm -hmm. we use USAContainers.co. That's who we got all of our containers through. They're great. Um, they're, they keep up to date with current pricing, so the prices do fluctuate up mm -hmm. and down depending on how the market and demand is and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but they're super fast on delivery, and we had good experiences with them. So not sponsored or anything, but that's who we used, and that's who we recommend. And the containers came out of downtown St. Louis. There's like a container depot down there. Cody might butcher this name, but he's going to give it a okay. shot. <laughs> Yeah, Summer will put the name up. It's from Lynn. I'm not going to try and butcher your last name. Um, but it says, do you ever think you'll build a run for the dogs or do they just stay in the house? Number two, do you do you ever have plans to expand the house, you know, when the kids come along? Okay, um, so we, di we did build a fence for the dogs. Um, I will leave that video or the videos linked right here. Or like, I think it's the very first one I'll leave linked right here. It's a pretty large backyard size area. We live on 20 acres, but I have what we like to call city dogs where they're not really used to being in the woods and they would literally chase down a squirrel until they can't run anymore if they had the opportunity. So for their safety, built a really nice size fence and in our backyard or a run and that's what they've been utilizing and they've been loving it. Mm -hmm. Um, second part of your question, or do they just stay in the house? It just depends. <laughs> um, Nitro, since you know he's older, he has cancer, he's tired, he would prefer to stay in the house, whereas the Germans would rather be out in the backyard and Maya loves to sunbathe, so we kind of just let them tell us what they want. That's why like when we're working, not all the dogs will be in because it's just like they'll go to the door and we let them out, or they'll come back, or they'll come sit by the door and then they'll want to come back in. So. Yeah. kind of like go in and out, in and out all day long and just depending on, you know, what they're wanting and if they're bored and stuff. Yeah, and Maya was an outside dog when I first got her, so she would probably prefer to just live outside. But I couldn't do that. <laughs> I could not do that. Yeah. I need my baby inside with me. Uh, and then do you ever have plans to expand the house? Uh, yes. So yes and no like we don't have written down blueprints yeah. <laughs> plans anything like that to expand it but we've talked about it however yeah we've talked about it we probably will expand it at some point i guess it just kind of depends how things happen you know my question is will you someday get horses or cows love your videos from carrie thank you carrie summer wants cows i want horses yeah so we'll compromise and get both <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it kind of just depends like uh we don't necessarily want to have to clear cut our whole land to be able to make i don't know field or prairie whatever you want to call it for for a ton of animals we definitely built in the woods because we want to be in the woods so we may end up getting one cow or one horse, but we're definitely not going to get a no. pack of anything. Yeah, for sure. Crisco Sports Cards says... I remember you guys stocked the pond. Are the fish driving? Um, so since it's been winter, they typically kind of like to hang out more by the bottom, so it's not so cold, I'm assuming. 
Oh, big stretch. But I have walked around the pond edge a couple times in the last week or two, and I'll not necessarily see a fish, but I'll just see something take off and then a big poof of mud and dirt in the bottom of the water. So I'm assuming they're still in there. I haven't fished and tried to pull any of them out, but mm -hmm. uh, we also haven't seen any dead fish. So I think that's a good sign too. Yeah, we've been really looking into getting a more permanent well and seeing about maybe potentially refinancing the property and getting an improvement loan to be able to get a well because they are quite expensive a bit like $20,000 and $14,000 if Cody and I were to do a majority of the work ourselves and just have them drill. So if we we want to stock the pond and make it an air, like a really flourishing area, but right now we're trying to keep it as clean as we possibly can um, since it is our main water source. So hopefully we'll be able to get a well in the next couple years and then we'll put a ton of time and money into the pond and just getting it like a little outdoor oasis type area. Yeah, once we get a, a well, I pretty much plan on draining the pond, reshaping it and cleaning everything up with the tractor mm -hmm. and then maybe putting down a liner if not putting down a bunch of rock kind of all around the bottom so that way um, and then a bunch of plants so that way we can keep the water super clean and be able to swim in it and not stir up a bunch of mud on the bottom you know being able to have the rock in there and everything bobby leblanc says when do you, when do y'all think y'all are building a shop so we can get some mud truck build videos man i hope soon my jeep has just been sitting collecting yeah. dust i started every now and then to get some oil circulating to make sure she's still working all right but he's been doing um, a little bit of dirt work over there kind of figure out what all we're going to need if we need to bring in some dirt because we want to build a slab foundation for the shop and so that's just there's a ton that goes into that and so that's where he's most that's what he's mostly been doing is just clearing everything out and yeah we moved all the toys away dirt. from there um started doing some dirt work and mm -hmm. stuff like that so hopefully soon yeah, hopefully we'll uh, at least have a slab before winter hits so that way we at least have somewhere flat to be able to do oil changes and work mm -hmm. on the trucks and stuff like it's that. it's gonna be a really big project the shop because um we want to make it look like a barn style so it's just gonna be a lot of beams and trusses and yeah, on time par, and money <laughs> on par with me and the houses I've had in the past the shop will be bigger than the house yes <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna be a very big project for sure Whenever we lived in our house in Texas, we had a really large size garage. That was like the main selling part for Cody. Yeah, was the house the was 1,200 square feet, but it was an oversized four car garage. So the garage was. Man, you're I making think, it sound like so fancy. No, it was I mean, not. It, yeah. it, that house needed a ton of work. We put yeah, a lot of work into yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. But um, it was worth it because of the size of the garage, because that's where we spent a majority of our time. Cody's a big tinker. I think when we lived in Texas, we rarely were even in our house. We yeah, I definitely, spent time I definitely spent more time in the garage than I did in the house, yeah. especially if you take away just sleep time. Yeah, and I like woodworking and painting and making signs and just doing things of that nature, and it was much easier to do it in the garage. So a shop is so important to us and we're definitely you know it's, it's on the priority list but it is a lot of time and money and so we just have to you know take it one day at a time mm -hmm. but that one was probably longer than a minute sorry matt aldridge says how much difference have you noticed with all the insulation you added last year oh my year? gosh a, <laughs> a huge ton difference. of difference yeah. so after spring the second time we noticed that we didn't do it right the first time. No. Um, the second time, the foam expanded so much more yeah. than it did the first time. So I and we think, also, uh, the first time we did it, it was a lot colder out. Yeah, it was super cold out. Spring. We had to get it done. So we basically just tried heating the bottles and I don't think they got as warm as they should no. have been. <laughs> um, the second time we did it, it was a lot warmer and we got a lot more expansion. We so. also were very new to all of this. So we had no knowledge. Yeah, I'd never so, spray foamed anything before. So we've definitely grown up a little bit when it comes to like our building techniques and knowledge mm -hmm. and stuff. So. First go around, terrible. Second go around, a lot better. Yeah, so it made a huge difference. It went from having to keep the fire fireplace going at full blast 24-7 mm -hmm. just to keep it warm in here to now, you know, I can just load it up before bed and it's still warm in here by the morning. Is the floor insulated? So uh, kind of? Yes and no. Like um, not underneath the flooring itself, but underneath the containers we insulated. Yeah, we added some fiberglass insulation into, uh, I don't know what you would call it. I guess the open spaces where the metal beams are for the mm -hmm. floor underneath. If I remember, I'll tag that video right here, but if I remember. Yeah, it, it definitely helped a little bit, but I think what helped the most was insulating the crawl space itself. Yeah. Um, I guess the biggest issue would have been 
just the wind coming through, stealing all the heat away from the floor. So just being able to enclose everything and keep the wind from hitting the floor made a huge difference. Yeah. Linda Andrews says, can you tell me what kind of wood heater you have? Um, this is an Intrepid Flex Burn. It's a smaller wood burning stove compared to most. I think it's rated for like six to 800 square feet or something like that. We love it. Uh, but yeah, we love it. It puts out a ton of heat. And it's and cute. Yeah, nice. it's nice looking and it's actually a catalytic converter stove. So it has a built-in catalytic converter. Whenever you get it going nice and hot, there's no smoke coming out of the chimney and uh, it puts out a lot of heat. So, yeah, and then it's can, also nice that we can cook on top of it. Yeah, so. and you can put in wood from the top, from the bottom, it's yep. easy to clean out. Not, yeah, nice ash drawer that pulls right out on the bottom so you don't have to worry about scooping mm -hmm. stuff into a trash can and all that. It mm. was a little bit on the pricey side. It was quite expensive. Um, yeah, I think it was about for us, three to four grand. Yeah. So it, it was an investment for us, but it well was worth, worth it. it. So worth it compared to the, like, did you say the wood stove that we had before? It was just uh, not, Yeah, it yeah. Was before not we just had your cheap $500 basic wood stove you from the uh, Rural King. King. Yeah. I think it was like and US don't get me brand. wrong, that thing, that thing put in some work. It definitely kept us warm while we were building, but in terms of like a long-term solution, we just needed something a little bit more efficient. So we decided to just splurge and get this and it has been well worth every single penny but i'll leave the link if i can remember somewhere either on the uh, screen or down below and if i forget then just leave it in the comments and i'll and i'll answer it yeah and then with it being a catalytic converter stove too once you get it going hot you can just choke it down and then it barely uses any wood so that was a, a big upside compared to our last stove we were constantly shoving the wood in there all day long Cass wilson says emergency disaster prepping what do you do how do you do it tips i'll say i don't want to tell you what to do or lead you in the wrong way in terms of like um how prepared you should be or what you should be doing so yeah, i'll leave a couple of channels down below that are great for that and they'll have a lot more um experience in terms of prepping and channels that we've learned from but yeah everybody's going to be different as far as their situation and their needs and everything mm -hmm. but i guess some major things that we have done or do is you know just making sure you have some extra water on hand mm -hmm. dog um, food. sealed water yeah and then for us we keep some dog food on hand and then just your basic stuff like canned food. Uh, have a go bag ready. Yeah, big um, medical kit. Conserve um, your ammo. You know, we're in a recession. Don't be blowing it off like it's 1989. <laughs> Definitely conserve your ammo and different things like that. Canned foods. Um, making sure, oh, a big one for me is books. So I have a ton of gardening books. I have a ton of medical books. I have a ton of like what happens if there's a nuclear disaster type books. There's I have a book for pretty much anything because, you know, if the grid goes down, you still need that knowledge and we're just not getting it these days. Um, canning stuff, you know, basically think of what would I do if I had zero technology and I could yeah. not look something up? How would I be able to go and accomplish that task and then buy the materials for that task? And that's just kind of what we've done. Mm -hmm. So food, water, protection, pretty much your three most important things, I would say. Matthew Brewer says, how much did it cost to build the shipping container home? Man, I don't even know. <sighs> that one's a really hard one. If we weren't putting into consideration labor, I'd say that we're probably in forty to sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, probably somewhere in there. And that's not including the land, no. obviously. Um with the land, i we've talked about it before, we've spent in total for all twenty acres at the time um, that we purchased, I we spent a hundred thousand I think or yeah. a little less than a hundred thousand so I, I think it was say, like ninety eight thousand yeah I would say all said and done probably somewhere around 160 180 maybe maybe but yeah. um obviously the land's not paid off yet so it's not like we just spent all that right at once or anything but we're we've kept a lot of our receipts and I have everything itemized so once we're done I plan on calculating every single thing up and really seeing uh, maybe I don't want to do that but <laughs> <laughs> we'll see okay next question I'll have it up here on this screen Hey guys, it's Clarence from South Africa. So cool. Can we expect some DIY furniture on your channel? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, I built a lot of the furniture in our last house just because we couldn't really afford to go out and buy mm -hmm. 
thousand dollar tables and couches and you know dining like sets and all yeah. that so we refinished a lot of um, older stuff yeah like our we had a really nice wood bed frame that we actually picked up at a garage sale and refinished the whole thing um i built our entryway table our coffee table summer refinished our dining set so mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we definitely, I built a couple shelves. We definitely built a lot of stuff. So. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I want to do in this house in terms of coffee tables, couches, um, entryway tables. There's a lot of furniture I want to put into it. I know we don't really have a whole lot of decorations or anything like that, and that kills me. I just want you to know that that's my favorite part of a home is being able to go in and really, like, decorate it and make it your own. But I've been very hesitant because with constantly working on it, things are getting dusty, and it's just so much more work. So... Once everything is done, which we're getting there, um, I just really want to finish the kitchen and the living room before I do everything because it's just such a small space. But once everything is done, I'm going to put so much time into designing all of the little aspects that make, you know, a home a home and giving it character. Yeah, and being that we have a sawmill and pretty much all the woodworking tools we could need at this point, um, and a lot of oak trees. We definitely yeah. are gonna put some of them oak trees to use and make some furniture out of them because what better wood could you have for furniture? Mm -hmm. He's snoozing hard. Yeah, he is. Tim's Gaming says, do you plan on having kids one day? Yeah. Yes, however, through all of this and just time of thinking, it kind of scares the living crap out of me. Um, and I definitely am not so gung-ho as I used to be and want to just take my time and wait until it's appropriate. And I know they say that like, if you wait for the right time, it's never going to be a right time. And while that is true, we just have so much going on right now, especially with Nitro and we just, can you just keep going yeah. a bit? Um, sorry, I'm just on top of that rock. I just want to take my time and really make sure that we're in a good place. And yeah, it scares the living crap out of me thinking about a human growing inside of me and then having to then push that human out and then care for it and be in charge of its entire life is quite a scary concept. And so I don't want to take that lightly. I want to make sure that we're very prepared. Yeah, and we, we also that. don't want to be stuck in a situation where we have, you know, four dogs in a tiny home and no extra bedroom to, yeah. for a child to be able to have or anything. So we ideally would want to at least be starting on adding on to the house yeah. before, you know, we have a kid. So that way, by the time they're two, three years old, there's a bedroom for them, you know? I mean, it's one thing when they're an infant, you have a crib in your bedroom, but um, they're obviously gonna need their own bedroom at some point, so. Mike Spencer says, when will you start the kitchen? Soon, I would say. It's I definitely mean, as, on the priority list. Yeah, as y'all know, we jump around a lot, so we can't exactly say when, but I would say this year. Yeah, it's just a lot of money. If I, okay, full transparency, it's a lot of money, and Cody and I have decided that putting money into Nitro's health and the little money that we do make into Nitro's health is way more important than um, deciding what countertops that I want. So we definitely want to, but we also don't want to get such a financial burden um, that we can't get ourselves out of. So we're just taking time doing other projects that we already have materials for, yeah. all while still planning on what exactly we want to do. So. Yeah, and then a lot of it goes into, we want to build our own cabinets for the kitchen mm -hmm. since it's kind of a, a funky measurement on space being that, you know, we have to deal with the size of the shipping containers and not, necessarily building it to the size that we want it to be and that makes it a little more difficult in putting your average home depot or lowe's cabinets in a space like this um, we want to build our own custom cabinets and to do that we kind of need a shop um, it's a lot of woodworking and a lot of time and effort so we really need somewhere that is out of the elements and you know that we can leave everything set up and be able to you know leave the work come back eat dinner go to sleep and then go back at it the next day instead of having to clean everything up and get it all back out mm -hmm. and do that over and over and over again so we do a lot of side projects but as you guys know we do youtube full time um cody left his job I want to say what two years ago mm -hmm. took a very very large pay cut when cody decided to come home from his job but the amount of time that he gets to spend with me and the animals and on our home is so much more worth it. And so with that, we do have to budget a lot. You know, we do have to plan things out accordingly and we can't, like we never go out to eat. We don't really ever go on trips. We try to live as frugally as possible. So that way we can keep him here, you know, being with us and being with Nitro and working on building our future. And so with that, 
Some things take a little bit longer to do, but it is still on the priority list. We just need to save a little bit more. Barbie Oppenheimer says, hi, what about the second floor of your container home? There's another floor up there? <laughs> I think she means in the future. Oh, okay. It's, uh, we yeah, talked so, about it. We just don't really know what we want to do. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely an option. We overbuilt the foundation for the container house. So if we do choose to build up, we can. But at the same time, if this is going to be our forever home, I don't want to be 80 and not be able to go up the stairs. Yeah. So, um, we'd we're, rather build I would out. much rather build out than up. But, I mean, I don't know. We honestly, I think what I plan on doing if we don't do a deck up there is we're probably going to cover the whole roof in solar panels. Mm -hmm. Just build, um, you know, a small slanted roof and cover it all in solar panels. That way we have a little more real estate for them. And then hopefully we can eventually get rid of the mount that we have out there. Mm -hmm. Just because after thinking about it, I just think it would look better if the panels were on the roof instead of on their own yeah. mounts up there. And then we would um, get more space for like the greenhouse garden area because that is where we get a majority of our sun. So. Yeah, we had to clear a lot of land to build all this and I don't really like it. So I would much rather use the least amount of land around us as possible and just kind of let nature retake over it all. Yeah. A lot of these are probably going to be longer than one minute now that I'm thinking about it, but sorry, we're talkers. I think Colitis. The Colitis or, yeah, that's my best guess. Who has the worst morning breath? Maya. Yep, Maya. Maya. It's awful. She comes every single morning to the side of both my side yeah. and Cody's so, side. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're like, oh time. my God. Yeah, it's so bad. It's so <coughs> bad. Like, get away from me. She'll jump on the bed and get in your face, woo wooing. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Maya, get you, away from me. You would have thought she uh, ate a barrel of dead fish. Like, yeah, it's pretty bad. Maya most definitely has the worst morning breath. Oh, no. <laughs> Jojo's World. Oh man, this is so many. Okay. How do y'all meet tacos or pizza? Hold on, hold on. Just take it one, one by one. How did y'all meet? Jeep uh, Club. Jeep Club. We were both in the same Jeep Club. We went off-roading. And yeah, our first date was off-roading in my Jeep together. Yeah. Tacos or pizza? Tacos, tacos pizza. pizza. Ninja Turtles or Power Rangers? Power, Power Rangers. Rangers duh. Yeah. LOL. Bone-in or boneless? Bone-in. Yeah, bone-in. Boneless wings aren't wings. They're chicken nuggets. Nail biters or nail clippers? Nail biters. Clippers. Um, ketchup or mustard? Ketchup, mustard. mustard. The beach or mountains? It depends. The beach to vacation, the mountains to live. Yeah, I would definitely live at the beach if there weren't, you know, like tropical storms mm -hmm. and hurricanes and um, possible ocean levels rising that might take out your house and, you know, just all that kind of stuff. So I prefer to live at the beach, but the mountains are really pretty too. Yeah. All right, guys, I think that is it. Um, with all of the little side questions, it's probably about 20. I would hope so, but I don't want to keep sitting here chatting your ear off and I'm quite tired. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to take a nap. So no, we're going to try and uh, take it easy this weekend, spend some time with our boy here. Oh, and, oh sorry, buddy. <laughs> He's like, whoa. Like, whoa. Um, spend some time with our boy here, and then probably Monday morning, get right back outside to work. And uh, luckily, the weather's going to pick up a little bit. It's supposed to be a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. um, but this week, we had all four seasons in one day. Seriously, so I'm not even joking. It went from 80 degrees in shorts, which actually, this was the day that Nitro had his issue. Yeah, I was we outside in... working in 80 degrees in shorts. And it snowed that night. So. Yeah, we will, yeah, literally. We were in shorts, and when we were at the vet, it started to rain and hail. This temperature started to drop, and then by the time we woke up the next morning, there was snow on the ground. Yeah, I think it went from 80 degrees to like 24 yeah. in the same day. So, yeah, all right. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're still here at this point in the video, you are a trooper, and I'm very grateful. Yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Also, Nitro says thank you guys for watching his mom and dad because he gets care. <laughs>